Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy. God of the margins, we have wandered far from your home. Again and again, we lose our way. We turn inward, afraid of the world around us. We forget that you have saved your people before and promised to do so again. Do not remember the deeds of our past, but turn our faces toward the future, where your forgiveness is sure, your welcome is clear, and your love overflows. Amen. Like a hen who gathers her chicks, God embraces you in tender care. Like manna in the desert, God feeds you with surprising mercy. Like a loving parent, God runs to meet you again this day, forgiving your sins for the sake of Christ, leading you from death into life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is the conclusion of the flood story. Because of human sin, the Lord destroys the earth by flood, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark. Yet divine destruction gives way to divine commitment. As in the first creation, God blesses humanity and establishes a covenant with all creatures. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 9, beginning at the 8th verse. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds and the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let, lo let, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. As God acted through Christ's suffering and death to bring us to God, so God acts through baptism to save us from a sinful existence. This spiritual cleansing marks our new life in Christ. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at the 18th verse. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which, it, which this prefigured, 
now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and, and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. After soccer, soccer practice in June 2018, 12 members of a Thai soccer team and their coach decided to explore the nearby Tom Lung Cave, one of Thailand's longest caves. The boys, aged 11 to 16, and their coach, 25, waded into the waters and began exploring the cave. When a flash flood came, they pushed deeper in, eventually making their way to an elevated platform four kilometers into the cave system. The flood filled the twisted cave system with water, trapping the boys for 17 days. For the first nine days, they had no food and relied on dripping stalactites for water, but they didn't sit and wait. Realizing they were trapped, the boys took turns digging a 16-foot hole into the cave wall, hoping to find a way out. They meditated to save energy and avoid thinking about food. Then British divers who had set out from the cave's entrance three hours prior happened upon the boys. Surviving that long was only half the battle, though. Thai seals enter the cave to help and hang with the boys as rescuers planned how to extricate them safely. Over the course of a three-day mission, divers retrieved each player and their coach. The arduous journey to the surface required each boy to wear a full-face diving mask, be tethered between two divers, and swim for hours through turns and exceedingly tight squeezes. Thanks to the efforts of Thai Navy SEALs and the international diving community, the players and their coach survived their journey into the wilderness and were able to quickly return to a normal, healthy life after the rescue. We've all heard of these experiences where it might have been better if no one had wandered out into the wilderness. Each of us has had a moment where danger has found us, we look despair in the face, and we are out of our element because we have left behind the comforts of our life. It is scary, terrifying, enlightening, and often ends up being a good story to tell. At the very least, it can be a reminder that no matter where we roam in the world, no matter what chaos or scary thing we face, we don't do it alone. In the book of Genesis, we read today, so, so the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I made them. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark. 
Noah and his family were the only righteous people left in a world of chaos, and so God offers them a chance to have life, to leave the world they knew behind and enter the chaos of the wilderness flood. Now this chance was the only thing which would save Noah and his family, and God promised to be with them through it all. Not an easy decision to make, but one that Noah and his family knew meant trading one type of chaos for another. And it was God's hope that starting over in the world, he can rid the world of evil. For if he destroys everything, Noah can bring righteousness to all people. But it isn't so easy for Noah. He must build his ark first. A three-decked ark to hold all types of the animals of the world would not be an easy task. But he does it, and he fills the ark, and it starts raining. For 40 days and 40 nights it rains, and the flood covered the earth for 150 days. But God kept his promise to Noah and his family. He saw them through the flood. He saw them through all the destruction he had caused. And then God makes a new promise. A promise not just to Noah and his family, but a promise to all of creation, to everything that is alive. He makes a covenant. In ancient times, a covenant was a legal document between two people. It was a signed contract. And God is making this contract with the whole world. Never again will God cover the whole world with a flood. God sets his bow in the clouds as a sign between God and the earth. This is a rainbow, but it is also so much more. A bow is a weapon, and God is telling us that he is putting down this weapon and leaving it where we can see it so that we might trust that he will never use it again. God realizes that he has gone too far and destroyed too much, and so his promise to us is that he will show some restraint. He is reminded at creation that everything that he made he thought was good, and he does not need to destroy it. So God sets his bow in the sky so that, only, so that not only are we reminded that God has given us this promise, but it is also a reminder to God himself of his love for us. That God is willing to give up a, we a weapon so that humanity might be saved. God makes all of these promises to us and to the whole earth and asks for nothing in return. There is no, I will do this, if you do that. God just tells us this is what he is going to do, that life will continue, that we get to have hope in the face of chaos and destruction, hope that no matter how bad things get, God will still be with us. You will notice that throughout the entire flood story, for humanity, nothing has changed. God is the one who changes. He has created new rules for himself on how he is going to deal with sin and evil. He's not going to do it by destroying the world and starting over. He promises that he is going to take a new path. He is going to suffer and grieve with us because of the evil in the world. Before the flood, the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. But seeing what sort of destruction he had caused, God makes the decision to give us hope. He makes his covenants with us to give us hope. And ultimately, this covenant culminates and is fulfilled when his son died and was raised to new life to give us new hope. The hope that life does not end with death, that the destruction of everything is not the end. God has kept his promises to us and set a sign in the sky so that all of us, God and all of creation, are reminded of his love for us and his promise that we will have life eternal. A reminder that no matter how bad things get, even when we get to the point of death, whether it is by flood or by weapons or being trapped in a cave, we are not at the end. For we have become children of God, inheritors of everlasting life. Amen.
Lifting our voices and turning toward God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word. Gracious God, who has named and claimed us, calling us your beloved children, you know the secrets of our hearts. When we sin and stray from your paths, you astound us with your saving grace. For this word of life, we give you thanks. Loving Jesus, living word, in you the kingdom of God has come near. Through you all that was lost has been found. Help us to boldly follow wherever you may lead, trusting your promise that we need not fear, for you are with us. For this word of life, we give you thanks. Holy Spirit, the mystery in which we dwell, into our scarcity, your abundance flows. Enliven all communities with your good news. Guide us to love and serve Jesus in giving ourselves away for the sake of the world. For this world of word of life, we give you thanks. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.